Every year or so, I clean out my garage and get rid of some of the treasures I've accumulated over the, the past 12 months. This bucket here has got a lot of the parts that, uh, that I uh, took out of my truck five years ago when I rebuilt the engine. Um, I don't know why it's taken me five years to decide I can finally part with these things, but you know, it's part of my truck. I really hate to get rid of it. Um, some of the stuff's got some real history behind it, too. This, this is a crankshaft out of a 61 Porsche convertible um, that's got a crack in it and a, and a bad uh, rod journal. That's the connecting rod that was on it. That was a fun trip. This happened in Wyoming, um, and I lived in Ohio at the time. Manifold off my Ford tractor. I really hate to see that go, but you know, you can't keep everything. Um, tie rod, oh yeah. It's a tie rod out of a, off of a Porsche that um, I had an adventure with. And um, actually that's about the straightest part of the car after that, that one. You know, this is the best this truck has ever looked. Uh, I decided I wanted to make it look a little bit more presentable than it was and uh, called the McGuire Company in California. I told them I was Pat Ertl from This Old Truck Magazine and what I wanted to do, and they said, you're who, from where? Um, I convinced them that I really was somebody, so they sent me some products that uh, they thought would do the job. They decided what, what I needed using their computer program they have. You give them the where you live, the kind of climate, the condition of your vehicle, the kind of paint it's got on it, and uh, they plug it into their computer and come up with a, a list of their products that will do the job for you. Um, the guy asked me if the paint was oxidized, and I said, yeah, a little. And he said, how bad is it? And I said, uh, well, you can write your name in the paint. So he came up with the materials that I needed to clean this truck up and make the paint shine, what there is left on it. Um, it only took about two hours. Um, I'm real happy with the job I did. I'm the publisher of this old truck magazine. Uh, the purpose of buying this old truck was to, to follow, to restore it and follow its restoration in the magazine. But I had too much fun driving it and I use it too much to to uh, make a show truck out of it, so basically it's just remaining an old truck. I started this old truck seven years ago. Uh, I had been a member of the Light Commercial Vehicle Association. The LCVA was having problems finding people to, to volunteer to run the, run the operation, so uh, I stepped in and took over the mailing list and uh, started publishing a magazine for, for those folks. And uh, it's grown substantially since then. It was initially about 900 subscribers. Now I've got in excess of 10,000 subscribers and it's growing uh, at, the, at the rate of a couple of thousand a year. we're going is called Shaw's Auto Wrecking. Um, 30 or 40 years ago it was a, a regular junkyard where you could go buy used auto parts but as John Shaw has gotten older he started just dismantling what's there and taking junk and sorting it and, and recycling it. He's one of the original environmentalists. He was recycling stuff years before the word environmentalist was ever heard on the TV. I bought this truck, the fellow I bought it from told me it needed a valve job. So we arrived at a price and knocked off a couple hundred dollars for the valve job that supposedly needed. After I talked to him for a while, I found out that after a tune-up, putting in a new set of points, it would run just fine for about 50 miles. Then it would start missing and breaking up and run terrible. It ran awful the day I looked at it. When I got it home, I discovered it had the battery in backwards. I was using cheap points that only had tungsten on one side. 
So in about 50 miles, the points were pitted up and beginning to short out. I switched the battery around, put a decent set of points in it. I didn't have any trouble with it for another five years. I had some fun driving this. One time a couple of winters ago, I was on this road and the snow was about a foot and a half deep. Even modern pickup trucks aren't very good in the snow, but this thing, those tall, narrow tires, and no weight in the back, it's like a hog on ice. I, I just sort of suggested where I wanted it to go and hoped it followed my suggestion. But I got all the way to town without any problem all the way back. auto wrecking an institution in the area hello, hello mr doing? shaw How you doing? i'm doing great i got a little bit of steel or metal here it needs to be recycled beautiful day here. oh it's gorgeous for this time of the year this is wonderful boy that's a nice what is it 39 47, 47. Yes, it's a all right. Take a look in there. You want to drive it? No. <laughs> better not, but I, I appreciate it. I love old cars and vehicles. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's nice. has always been primarily agricultural. Um, the farms seem to be getting bigger, the machinery gets bigger, and uh, small farmers are just about disappearing in this area. Seems like if a guy doesn't have seven or eight hundred acres, he can't make a living anymore. I grew up on a farm of 250 acres, and we had a pretty good, I felt, a pretty good living. I had a lot of fun on the farm anyway. That's where I learned to drive trucks. We had a um, late 40s KB5 and a uh, GMC pickup truck. I learned to drive on the KB5 because it had a hand throttle and the GM didn't. And when I was learning, I was too small to be able to reach the gas pedal and see out the windshield at the same time. So dad would take me out in the field and, and uh, put it in creeper gear, which was like five miles an hour wide open. And I'd drive around all over the fields, chase cows in the pasture, and, drive it into the creek once in a while and he'd have to come and get it out but uh, that's where I learned to, to drive trucks that's where I learned to love trucks.